Welcome to another week, another show of Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara. Thanks for tuning in. I know I mentioned Sioux City, Des Moines, and a ton one Cedar Rapids, but all points in between. So thanks for tuning in. Got another good show lined up for you this week. Again, DaveOHaraSports.com. If you missed this episode or any part of it, please go online to catch the rest of the show or watch it again for a second, third time. We always appreciate you tuning in as often or whenever you can. So that being said, I want to get right to it this week again with Craig and Stacy Schrader, our usual hashtag win the day segment here at Hawkeye. And love talking to Craig and Stacy with their inspirational story of persevering through an unspeakable tragedy, losing their son, Austin Flash Schrader, uh, to children's or childhood cancer. At 15 years old, he fought the strong battle for a little over a year, but it's, it's been six years since Austin has passed away, and you can uh, see Craig and Stacy Schrader's great story of perseverance through unspeakable tragedy with Austin Flash Schrader passing. And again, go to www.bitewithflash.com. Dot org, and that's the, or Facebook, you can go to Fight with Flash Foundation. And Craig and Stacy, as always, thanks for joining us. And secondly, how's everything going with you two? It's going great. Good, thank you. Yes, I love the bright yellow, yellow Hawkeye with the win the day. Uh, hat, got the lightning bolt. Stacy's got the lightning bolt shirt on. <laughs> Again, with the earrings. I tell you, I, I love the promotion. Now, the reason I mention this, folks, is that you can go online again, uh, www.fightwithflash.org, and you can order apparel. They have a private brand of bourbon. Uh, we are going to get in with Stacy, get into more details about some events upcoming for fundraising. But Craig, before we get to all that, we need to talk about what leads us up to fundraising. And you and I and Stacy have talked a lot about support. So Craig, let's talk about that, the support mechanism that you offer, you and Stacy, but then bring it closer to home when we talk about the Schaefers too, please. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we are we are here um, uh, as soon as someone gets a cancer diagnosis. Uh, um, our Fight with Flash Foundation um, gets shared with patients that uh, are at the hospital, um, and uh, they are able to reach out to us, and we're connected that way. And we're help, helping them to uh, answer those tough questions because as soon as you hear those words, your child has cancer. Um, it's really, really tough to even think and know what to do, and uh, and and your life gets completely just you know turned upside down. And and we're there to basically try to have a a calming perspective for people, um, and to be able to uh, look at all of the different uh, options that they have. Um, and those options, you know, can be with treatment options, but a lot of it is is that uh, you know how well known public do you want this to be, and uh, um, you know do you want to have a social media presence and uh, do you want to have a movement? Um, do you want to raise money and funds for support of yourself and the cost that it's coming to bear for this? Um, and so we help all those families at any given point in time during uh, um, during their journey and their battle and try to follow up with the families that want that communication with this and uh, and respect the families that, uh, that don't. Um, but we're also there to talk about some of the tougher conversations that they have to have with their child or other children at home. And uh, we also like to uh, um, uh, talk to them about faith. And uh, it's a very, very important part of our journey and where it is still today for us. And uh, um, for those that uh, want to have those conversations with their children, um, we're there to help as well. And, uh, and then even in the end, um, you know, if there's an unfortunate uh, turn and uh, someone loses a child, uh, we are there to help them with that next section of their life and to move forward. So they understand that there is a purpose and a reason to continue to get up and continue to live. Um, live in their child's honor and uh, and keep their name um, and their story and journey moving forward. And even if it's not even a cancer um reason for a death, um, really a, a death of any kind. We are here to to show that emotional support with those families um, and their friends as well. Um, and that was something that we were we were blessed, um, you know, to meet the Schaefer family and uh, um, to help them and really you know, fall in love with Tate like everybody else did and to live Tater tough. And uh, um, we know that uh, Austin and, and Tate are up there uh, um, smiling down us and uh, um, uh, very, very excited uh, for the football season. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, and uh, to be able to, to, to participate and watch in that as well. You are a true pro, Craig. Great segue into football season. And thank you for sharing all that information with us. So, Stacey, as we talk about football, 
September 4th, Hawkeyes kick off against Indiana, and there's another big game coming up the next Saturday on the 11th against Iowa State. But before the, between those two games on Friday, September 10th, you are going to have another golf tournament. So let's you and I talk for a minute about the golf tournament, please. You bet. Thank you, Dave. Um, yes, our golf tournament, we, ha we hold two big, two events for our fund big fundraisers for our Fight With Flash Foundation each year, and the golf is our biggest fundraiser. So it is held September 10th, Friday, September 10th, and at Finkbine Golf Course, and it is filled, it's such a fun day. The community comes together, and um, we do a silent live auction, and um, and then we also, it's really neat that we get to have some of the AYA patients be able to be um, a foursome or eight some, whatever they end up, whoever gets to come. And it's just fun having them out there and they get to tell their story to, to, our, to all the golfers out there. And um, it's just a really awesome day and, and to keep the, aware, yeah, the awareness out there, um, keeping our Flash's spirit alive mm -hmm. and, um, and just raising some good money for the hospital. So. And it's a fantastic event, as you mentioned. If you go online again, either at www.fightwithflash.org or go to Facebook. Craig, Stacy, as always, thanks for joining us. Such a tough topic, but you always leave us smiling because of the perseverance and not just surviving this unspeakable tragedy as parents, but thriving. And thank you for that very much. Thank you, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Always so my pleasure, Stacy. Yeah. Craig, thank you. And thanks for tuning in. Back with more Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara, in just a few moments. Hi, I'm Joel from Tice Chevrolet. We've lived through some very interesting times the last few months. Ensuring everyone's safety is more important than ever. That is why we're participating in the Chevy Clean program. At your request, we will pick up your vehicle, service it, and return it after we've cleaned it using the current CDC guidelines. This is just another way to work towards exceeding your expectations. So give us a call and let us show you what it means to be part of the Tice Automotive family. His hands were hard and stained with dirt from breaking ground. He's the heartbeat of the heartland and everybody knows. If a ship ever comes in, it's coming in and Hi, I'm Joel from Tice Automotive Family. We're living through some of the most interesting and challenging times many of us have ever seen. Knowing who you can rely on is more important than ever. Many of us turn to our families to get us through, and the same holds true here. From our fair, upfront pricing, to exceptional service after the sale, we truly want to exceed your expectations. So give us a call or stop by and let us show you what it means to be part of the Tice Automotive Family. Welcome back to Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara. As you can see on the screen, my buddy James Vandenberg joins me. Former Hawkeye quarterback, James with RBC Wealth Management, CorridorInvestmentGroup.com. You got James, the former Hawkeye quarterback, and our buddy also, mutual friend, uh, Bill Happel Jr., Cedar Rapids legend, Iowa legend. You got the receiver and Bill Happel Jr. and James Vandenberg. So James, as always, thanks for joining us. And secondly, how's everything going with you and Billy Happel? You guys keeping a roof on the place or what's happening? Thanks for having thanks for having me, Dave. Yeah, it's just uh, another day here at the Corridor Investment Group. <laughs> Nothing too wild going on. Well, that that's good news. Keep the lid on the place. That's right. Hey, I got to talk about you out golfing yesterday as we record this on Tuesday afternoon. Obviously, it records on Fridays and over the weekend and online. DaveOHaraSports.com. So, James, you had a little golf outing yesterday, the Zach Johnson uh, annual fundraiser uh, in Cedar Rapids. Uh, but unfortunately, Zach was not able to attend because he's still dealing with uh, COVID protocols. He wasn't able to play in the British Open or the Open Championship a couple of weeks ago. So, you played in his uh, place amongst many other celebs. So, how did it go? Did you hit him well and not often? What happened? I, I definitely wasn't playing in his place. But <laughs> I had to go there. I, I, I did get to play, and it, awesome event. Um, 
for my own sake, it was nice. Normally they have a huge crowd there. And I just imagined me like killing some old lady with a, <laughs> a shank off the tee, but because of COVID the crowds weren't there. So I could shank it and not kill anybody, but no, it was an awesome event. A lot of fun, um, super cool cars. And uh, yeah, it was just a great day. Ha. Yeah. Hey, this just in. It's the end of July in Iowa, James. It gets a little warm here, doesn't it? So, and I believe you were still at Elmcrest and Cedar Rapids. Is that right? Yep. That's where I believe he has it every single yeah, year. Yeah, that's, that's what I say. Every year. Beautiful stuff. course. I, I've torn up some turf there before, James. So that's, I uh, know the place well. But we're well, glad to hear that. And I heard, rumor has it you and Rob Brooks, a mutual friend of ours, and Rob will join us on the show at some point. Cedar Rapids and University of Iowa broadcasting legend uh, Bob Brooks' son, Rob Brooks. Heard you two cleaned up. You guys had quite the tandem here. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if we cleaned up, but we played pretty good. <laughs> uh robbie robbie can play golf uh, yeah. that guy's a stick anybody would want robbie on their team yeah amen to that well james uh, it, it's always good you're a co former quarterback you know what it's like to position yourself with good players right and you look even better yourself that that's how you do it exactly yeah well hey uh, the reason i wanted to mention rob brooks's name as well is I had a great chat with gary dolphin today so you're going to be on vacation next week so gary dolphin hawkeye broadcasting legend will be sitting in for you next week but i wanted to ask you this a couple of different things a couple of different directions to go you and i talked last week about uh the rumor or the wives tale that every receiver comes back to the huddle after every play and says i'm open i'm open and you kind of joked and said that's overblown over overrated but some do some don't and you want good intel i have to joke with you i talked with our mutual friend uh, Joe Mershman and uh, Joe and I were talking last week uh, about uh, his son Jeff uh, is a uh, an offensive coordinator at heart and isn't, isn't everybody James as you're smiling so uh, and Joe just reminded me and I see you smiling because I've heard Jeff say this many times I always tell James you should have run the flea flicker you should have run the flea flicker a lot of that isn't your call a lot of that is either Greg Davis or Ken O'Keefe so I'm going to step aside and let you kind of sort that out for us and put this to rest for Jeff Marshman please well, first of all, Jeff Mershman's an offense coordinator. I think he's a hitting coach for the Cubs. <laughs> he's probably a pitching coach for the Cubs. All the above. Uh, I, I, lo I love Jeff's feedback, and he does like the flea flicker. Um, coach Davis used to always just joke that, you know, twice a year, twice a year we got to do it for the donors. you got to put a flea flicker in there just twice a year for the donors. And so, no, I mean, I, I think, I mean, when you play quarterback, when you're at the University of Iowa or any other big institution, there's – there's a lot of, let's just call it Monday morning quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. Jeff is one I happen to love, but uh, <laughs> there's probably some out there I don't love as much. And uh, it's just something you navigate. Uh, we can't do a flea flicker every game. I do know that. Well, one can only hope, right, James? So I appreciate that very much. So, so let's do this in a couple minutes I have left, left with you for this week in this segment on this show before you jet on out to on vacation. I got to ask you, man, and David Eicholt and I are going to talk about this in the next segment, our Hawkeye Insider. Big 10 could be the Big 20, could be the Big 16. Uh, what is happening here? The SEC is becoming the whole world EC. What is happening, James? And what do you think if you were playing quarterback for the Hawkeyes? Obviously, competition breeds competition. But your thoughts on the state of college football, specifically the Big 10? I think it's clearly an ever-shifting landscape right now. And in my opinion, I guess... The NIL was always going to be the first domino that was probably going to start a series of dominoes. And clearly that's happening. Now, this is how this all shakes out. Who knows? Um, I mean, I don't even know how to speak to OU in Texas leaving the Big 12 or Michigan and Ohio State mm -hmm. talking to the SEC in a super conference or whatever. But uh, there's no doubt conferences, teams and now individuals are all trying to gain leverage and uh who knows how it shakes out but i do know i mean as soon as as soon as nil kind of came into existence you were having kind of a a change of the guard going forward and so i'm not smart enough to know how it's going to shake out uh call me just an old dog I, I don't know but i do think when we think of this landscape in five years it's kind of look different than it does right now Oh, amen to that. And James, just let's never forget when someone says it's not about the money, guess what the only thing it's about? The money. You, yeah, you working in the financial industry, you know that as, be, as well as anybody. But So James, as we wrap up here, um, I look forward to catching up with you and you get back from vacation. Always appreciate your insights. We'll have more uh, hyper-analytical looks as we're getting closer to kickoff here. Man, and, and again, as uh, we've talked about on this show with David Eichel to myself and you and me and others, Hawks are starting off, uh, they're not dodging anybody. Indiana, 
going to be top 20 ranked, Iowa top 20 ranked, and then the next week, top five, depending on the poll you look at, top 10 for sure, Iowa State, Iowa, Indiana at Kinnick, Iowa, Iowa State in Ames. That's a heck of a juggernaut, and we're going to get into that when you get back from vacay, but quick takeaway on those two first games is going to be something else, isn't it? No, yeah, I look forward to it. I, I mean, you want to play good competition, and uh, it's, I, I guess there's probably some positives of playing Southwest, South Dakota State, uh, <laughs> your first game of the year, but there's some negatives too. So um, I, I know Coach Ferentz and the team will not be – they'll be ready. Uh, they'll be ready. Looking forward to that. And you're right, the directional schools always help occasionally. But, hey, James, as always, thank you so much for joining us. Have a great vacation. We'll talk to you in a couple weeks, all right? Awesome. Thanks for having me, Dave. You're very welcome. Thank you, James. He is James Vandenberg, former Hawkeye quarterback, now with RBC Wealth Management in the Cedar Rapids area. He and Bill Happel, Jr., the former Hawkeye wide receiver, James, former Hawkeye quarterback, RBC Wealth Management or CorridorInvestmentGroup.com. For James Vandenberg, I'm Dave O'Hara. We'll be back with more to close out the show with Hawkeye insider David Eicholt. Back with more in just a few moments. When you're a farmer, there's a lot of things you can't control. But there is a way to give your soybeans an early advantage. Mershman Seed Soybean Seed Treatment featuring Trepidity ST. An independent analysis has proven faster and more even emergence every time. Just look at the Mershman difference. Give your crop the boost it needs for a uniform stand. For the best yields, grow with us. Mershman Seeds. Hi, I'm Joel from Tice Automotive Family. We're living through some of the most interesting and challenging times many of us have ever seen. Knowing who you can rely on is more important than ever. Many of us turn to our families to get us through, and the same holds true here. From our fair, upfront pricing, to exceptional service after the sale, we truly want to exceed your expectations. So give us a call or stop by and let us show you what it means to be part of the Tice Automotive family. One word means more to farmers than any other, yield. Nobody knows this better than your friend in the field, Mershman Seeds. With industry-leading seed treatments like Trepidity ST, you'll see faster emergence and more bushels per acre. Become a part of the Mershman family and see the difference in your field. Ask your dealer for superiority, Mershman Seeds. Hi, I'm Joel from Tice Chevrolet. We've lived through some very interesting times the last few months. Ensuring everyone's safety is more important than ever. That is why we are participating in the Chevy Clean program. At your request, we will pick up your vehicle, service it, and return it after we've cleaned it using the current CDC guidelines. This is just another way to work towards exceeding your expectations. So give us a call and let us show you what it means to be part of the Tice Automotive family. Welcome back to Hawkeye with me, Dave O'Hara. As you can see on the screen, not Zoom screen, in-person screen. My buddy David Eichel, HawkeyeInsider.com, at Hawkeyes on 24-7 via social media. Say David's, all of his information on the bottom of the screen along with mine, at David Eichel via social media. Part of that fantastic 24-7 sports network, the juggernaut CBS Sports. And David, so much to get to you with this week. And thanks again, as always, for joining me. You doing okay? Yeah, things are going well, Dave. I'm happy to be back. And uh, football's closer than ever, so it's always good news. Normal. Football, might I add. Darn right. Well, hey, you just got back from Indianapolis. I'm uh, do my usual. I'm going to tee you up and get out of your way. Indianapolis media days last week, Big Ten media days. Go. Well, I'll say no. Kirk Ferentz, the highlight of his entire media days was eating an oatmeal raisin cookie before he met with the media. At least that's what he told us. But, you know, Kirk was pretty full of one-liners, which I kind of thought was very interesting. But a couple of key takeaways that you're going to know about the two deep in the depth chart that was released. Two true freshmen make their debut in it. Wide receiver Keegan Johnson, who I anticipate is going to be a big, big part of that offense. And Tyrone Tracy said during media days that he's really helped push the room forward. And if you have a true freshman wide receiver pushing an entire position group forward, that's pretty high praise. Secondly, though, in-state offensive tackle Connor Colby is now listed as the backup, I believe, left tackle. So... Kirk Ferentz said, you know, I don't like career, you know, projecting guys' careers, but he said that I'm very comfortable with saying that, you know, 15 practices in, that he's going to have a very, very good Iowa career. But I think the group's full of, you know, optimism. I think they know what kind of challenges they're going to have with Indiana and Iowa State as the first two games. But it's like every media day, though, Dave. It's, you know, who's excited about their team? Every coach is super excited about their team. Every player's improved. But, uh, you know, it was fun. It was really good to be back in Lucas Oil Stadium. And I think Kirk, 
and Zach Van Valkenburg summed up best and they said, hey, you know, it's good to be here, but uh, we want to be back in here in December. How ironic that is, right? We talked about basketball last year with the Big Ten turning and the NCAA tournament. You spent a lot of time there. But, yeah, I love the one-liners and very much coach speak, as you predicted last week. I like my team. I think we're okay. I don't know how we are right now, but I think we'll be okay. And I'm not picking on anybody, but you're right. But you did some nice uh, interviewing and getting through some of the surface, as you mentioned, with Tyrone Tracy and Van Valkenburg. And uh, great interviews and insights, I think, that they're – perspective is really interesting because, uh, as you mentioned, a lot of anticipation and excitement around Hawkeye land here in the state. Mm -hmm. So let's do this. Let's talk about, um, you know, any other tidbits you have that you want to mention with Media Day from last week, but we're going to talk conference expansion, SEC rumors in the Big Ten expanding. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, the NBA draft. We'll do a little preview with uh, Joe Wieskamp and, and about Luca Garza. But I want to mention, you know, viewers, if you would, go to, again, David's uh, personal Twitter handle, at David Eicholt or Hawkeyes, at Hawkeyes on 24-7 or HawkeyeInsider.com. Uh, David and Sean Bach do a great job and with recruiting and everything else with the Hawkeyes. But CBS uh, Sports did a poll where the Iowa Hawkeye athletic program as a whole ranked third overall behind Alabama and Oklahoma. And you and Sean wrote well about that. So check that out. And then also uh, there were some contract extensions. You and I talked about this last uh, spring in yep. March when Fran McCaffrey was extended. But there are other contract extensions. Again, Sean and David wrote uh, great pieces on that and great coverage. So continue really great work by you guys. And by the way, Sean, get well soon. <laughs> Private joke, but you'll know. All right, David, so let's do this. Let's get back to uh, expansion. My goodness, I joked with James Vandenberg just for a, a segment before about the SEC, SEC is now the WEC with the World yeah. you know, yeah. Conference, and, and it's unbelievable. Now there's rumors the Big Ten are looking at UC, USC. UCLA, West, West Coast conferences, or Pac-12 conferences, West Coast teams like Stanford, Washington, even yeah. Arizona, Colorado. You look at geographically, Colorado, Colorado may make sense because of the Denver market. Sure. But then you look at trying to ravage some of the Big 12 with the, you know, Texas Tech, Baylor, the Dallas market. Houston market. It's, it's you crazy. and I, yeah, you it's and I talk crazy. about this all the time, David. Again, when someone says it's not about the money, what's the one thing it's about? The it's money. It's exactly about the money. And let me let me say this. I think something that's being completely overlooked in this entire situation: the Longhorn Network is failing. It's without a doubt, right? There's a lot more money involved in the SEC network, and with that new media rights granted with the ESPN and the SEC network, they're going to want to boost that up. So I think that you know. Maybe I'm putting on a tinfoil hat here, but maybe ESPN has been helping drive this entire thing to be able to move Oklahoma and Texas into the SEC so they can really continue to ramp up that coverage. And I don't know what level this really makes sense for Texas. Dave, I'll say this. Yeah. I, I think that they are going to become what Nebraska is the Big Ten. I think, I think Texas is going to be that in the SEC. I so like that one line. <laughs> I like that one line quip. That's very well done. And Notre Dame, I still still think that's interesting. Even though NBC yeah. Sports has thrown boatloads of money at them, we got about a minute left. So let's do this. Let's talk about the NBA draft. About a minute, minute and a half. Let's talk about and. <laughs> Again, viewers, much more to come on NIL, uh, conference expansion, money, 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 and, oh, by the way, money. Uh, yeah. But, David, let's do this. Let's talk about the NBA draft, speaking of money. Hopefully it's a great payday for Joe Wieskamp and Luca Garza, both still projected to be drafted on most big boards, uh, mock drafts. By the time you watch this, viewers, the draft will have already taken place on Thursday night. We record this on Tuesday afternoons. So, David, we still feeling good about Luca and Joe. Joe, a late first round, early second round. Luca, mid to sec late second round. Are we still looking at that? I think so. I think that I don't think Joe Wieskamp will be a late first round pick. I think if he did come to terms with the team, uh, you know, then I think he can sneak into that because I mean, six eleven wingspan, dead eye shooter from three, great athlete, forty two inch vertical. I mean, th those don't grow on trees, and that's exactly what the NBA likes to see. For Luca Garza, I think he's going to fall somewhere between that forty. I mean, that um, excuse me, the fifty and sixty range. And the thing is about Luca Garza, who I've heard repeatedly, he's given you know some of the best interviews that prospects have ever given. I think that combined with slimming down his body, I do think that if he gets on the right team, it, it's not going to surprise me if he goes about fifty or fifty eight. But I will say. Might be uh, joining his friend Obi Toppin in New York in the New York Knicks uniform. Ooh, that'd be fun. <laughs> and I'll tell you, David, you and I have talked about this. It's not so much, even if you get a good free agent deal, a sweetheart of a deal, it's not so much where, um, what position you go. It's also where you go and how you're going to be used. So th this will be interesting to see, that's for sure. David, great stuff from you as always. Again, folks, you see his information on the bottom of the screen at Hawkeyes on 24-7 via social or HawkeyeInsider.com at David Eichel. You see all my information at the bottom of the screen. My friend, as always, thank you so much. Great 
great stuff from you as always, and look forward to catching up with you next week. And thanks, Dave. Always good to be here. You're very welcome, and thank you. My pleasure as always. So again, for David Eicholt, James Vandenberg, and Craig and Stacy Schrader, and to you, the viewers, thanks for tuning in as always. And to Rob and Abby from Homegrown Media Company, thanks again to you for getting us on the air. Remember, Gary Dolphin will join us next week, sitting in for James Vandenberg, Hawkeye legendary broadcaster. Looking forward to catching up with Dolph as always as well. So again, thanks to our advertisers and sponsors as well. So please stay tuned for just a second after the show for the rolling credits to give our advertisers and sponsors the credit and consideration they deserve. So for Hawkeye, I'm Dave O'Hara. That's all for me. Thanks to all of you.